What's up guys? Welcome back to the home slice. Sorry, the uh, the old pipes are a bit rusty this morning because uh, <clears throat> the pandemic has finally visited <coughs> our corner of the world over here. So um, we've all been sick this week, but we're doing well and getting through it and um, excited kind of for that chapter of life to be over, as I'm sure many of you guys have experienced. Um, yeah, I hope that all of you guys are doing well. I recently published a video where there was a hair whittling edge on a chopping knife that performed really, really, really extraordinarily well. Uh, my assumption to that point had been that uh, if you've got a foil burr, which is usually responsible for whittling hair if the edge is over a hundred grams on the best machine, that the performance would drop pretty quickly. And I was so surprised by the chopping test that I figured, hey, I should um, go back and create some hair whittling edges and test them. So I'm working on, I'm working on developing a new method for testing. I was looking around for some bigger rope because I kind of would rather test a big rope four or five times rather than a little rope six or seven hundred times. <laughs> so I was looking around my workplace and I found this old ship rope that had been on a ship. And so we're going to test out the uh, hair whittling edges today against a very dusty, gnarly ship rope that I have come to affectionately call the death rope. And I don't know how it's going to go. We'll see. I don't know if there's any edge that I could put on a knife that would get through this rope. But it'll be interesting to just confirm that and see how that goes and then maybe try a couple different kinds of edges on it and see if there's anything that can get through it. So anyway, I hope you enjoy, but I'll just go through a bit of a montage here because I've sharpened up everything from a Victorinox up to Maximet and I'll flash through the sharpening method that got it hair whittling because not all of them got hair whittling from the same stones and then uh, go through the test real quick. Thank you. 
Yeah, um, struggling, struggling to initiate any cuts. Let me put a scale under here. I'll try to readjust the camera so you can see. But um, definitely, it's not for lack of force. <laughs> definitely not for lack of force. Oh yeah, I'll turn it to a, a area where I haven't initiated a cut yet. So we'll do right there and you'll be able to see. <clears throat> so when that goes up to 20 kgs, that's 50, almost 50 pounds of pressure. <clears throat> You can see it initiated a cut. It initiated a cut in there, but it's very slow. Yeah. I think I'm going to call it. <laughs> We're not making any progress except through the first few fibers. Ooh. Yeah. Nope. What's up, guys? Welcome back. If you saw my last test, you saw that this gnarly ship rope kind of annihilated the edge on the knife that I was testing. And it's sort of given me pause to wonder whether or not this is a good thing to test knives with at all. And I figured a good way to check that would be to take this Sandrin TCK, which is pure tungsten carbide, and see if this can get through, the, through it. If pure tungsten carbide at 71 Rockwell can't cut through this rope, I don't know if we'll have much hope with anything else. I'll still test a dual grit edge on it, just in case it works a miracle, but anyway, we'll see. But first off, we'll just test the Bess. Okay, so the best is the best score, the best reading is coming back at 693 grams, which is terrible. Which is funny, I've been using this and I've been pleased with how it's performing, so I don't know if tungsten carbide, the shape of the apex lends itself to aggressiveness, just like ceramic knives where it can have a bit of a wider apex, but because the corners of the apex are really, really square, it still cuts aggressively. That's what happens in like ceramic kitchen knives. There's an article on scienceofsharp.com if you want to look into that. Or maybe this is more dull than I realized it was, but let's just give this a try and we'll see what happens. <laughs> Okay, I'm not getting much farther than with the steel knife, and this uh, is becoming extremely, extremely difficult. <laughs> this death rope may be a bit too much of a death rope. I don't know. Let me grab my Spyderco paramilitary. 
CPMM4. This is a really beat up dual grid edge, but we'll see if we make any progress. We are definitely, we are definitely making progress, guys. Guys, we are making progress. This thing is still cutting. This thing is still cutting, guys. Oh my gosh, we're gonna make it. What in the actual world? Look at that. Fibers just separating. Okay, well, this is crazy talk. This is absolute craziness. I don't know if I'm lined up there. Yeah, we're almost there. I mean, okay, this is CPMM4. This does stay aggressive really, really well. So we may, we'll have to redo some of the steel testing. And it's definitely, it's starting to slow down a little bit. But we got through the rope. Well, we're get, I think we're going to get through the rope. Yeah, we're definitely going to get through the rope. What in the world? Okay. <clears throat> Either hair whittling edges are terrible for abrasion resistance, and that foil burr folds the apex over. I mean, hair whittling edges above 100 bess. If you get an edge to whittle hair because it's under 50 bess, then probably it would do this really well, I think. I don't know. That's what we got. We got to test that. Um. Tungsten carbide. I guess this didn't start out super sharp though, but this would not cut through the ship rope. Well, I think it's pretty safe to say that no hair whittling edge is the match of that ship rope. It's interesting that the um, dual grit CPM M4 was able to get through it and the hair whittling Maxima edge was not. Um, so that was, that was really interesting for me. I think it would be fun to sharpen up a few of these steels in dual grit and give it a try on the rope of death and just see how it goes. But it's possible that it might give us no data. <laughs> I'm wondering why all the hair whittling edges refuse to do that when the chopping knife performs so well, but I'm thinking that that little tiny foil burr, maybe in a, a rope slicing task, would have more of a tendency to fold over flat and present a rounded surface that wouldn't be good for severing fibers. Um, where in the chopping test, that thing would have just been ripped off instantly, and then you'd have a fresh edge underneath that's not very wide because the foil burr wasn't very wide. So maybe that accounts for some of the difference, um, but I don't really know. We'll have to do a bit more testing. In any case, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a great day, and I'll just say, hey, peace out from the home slice.